Well, thank you everyone that took to Twitter and tweeted your questions to add OTRS Central for this Q&A. Without any further ado, let me go ahead and get the question answering underway. Let's get started here. PWTR Duke asked, if there was to be a draft of any wrestler from any period, which black wrestler would Vince draft to be a rapper? All of them. The answer would be all of them. Or maybe just most of them, and the rest of them would be shuck and jive type of guys, just the way Vince likes it. Tommy CB asks, do you feel Chicago made a mistake passing up on Tyus Jones? I do not. While I wanted somebody like maybe a DeLon Wright or a Jerry and Grant or even a Rashad Vaughn, I knew heading into this draft this week that there was a good chance that none of those guys would be on the board at number 22. I wanted Wright, but you know, deep down I was like, that's the absolute floor for where he's going to go in this draft. Um, so them taking Bobby Portis I'm not mad about because, again, I think he was a better prospect than Tyus Jones. In that particular case, they went with the better talent. And Portis fills a need, a backup four with more post game and more size than, let's say, a Taj Gibson. Uh, so I, I'm not mad with their pick at all because when I look at Tyus Jones, here was an undersized point guard that was going to get limited minutes in that backcourt. And the Bulls have had enough undersized point guards. The reason I wanted somebody like a DeLon Wright was because Wright was more like six foot five, and as a result would have more versatility. He could play on the floor at the same time as Derrick Rose and Jimmy Butler, where you know you could do that with Tyus Jones, but I don't know if that's the best idea in the world. Um, I like Tyus Jones as a player, but I thought Bobby Portis was a better player, better prospect, and he still made sense for the Bulls, so I'm not that upset at them passing up on him, no. Uh, Dutch Gen X, what is the one place on earth you – would ever like to visit, which you haven't visited before. Um, Serena Williams' vagina. Serena Williams' vagina. And you know, I can't, can't. I don't even know if I could say that so much anymore. Something happened about two, three years ago to her face. I don't know what the hell happened. But I could close my eyes and pretend. Uh, Chairman O15. What do you think of the Chicago Blackhawks winning the Stanley Cup? I think it's a great thing for the city of Chicago, obviously a great thing for the Blackhawks organization. Former Romaner Bill Wirtz died, so that way his Blackhawks could thrive. It's a shame that I'm not more into the NHL and more into the Blackhawks. Frankly, I was more into the Blackhawks in the 90s and early 2000s, you know, and I, those are a lot of lean and bad years, and as I got older and working and everything else, other responsibilities of life, you know, had to pick between different sports. And hockey just kind of fell by the wayside a little bit where I became a much, much, much more casual viewer than I ever really wanted to be. I wish it was something where I could feel more emotionally connected to them winning the Stanley Cup because it's a great thing. It's just I'm not going to sit there and be one of those fair weather bandwagon guys, even though as many of the crappy years as I put up with in the late 90s, early 2000s, I probably feel like I have a right to do so. Duke THS, how do you feel about the Buffalo Bills quarterback situation? Who would you start and who should be the starting wide receivers? In terms of the starting wide receivers, you're looking at Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods um, and then Percy Harvin out of the slot. Uh, the quarterback situation, I don't feel good about it. Who sh would I start? Personally, E.J. Manuel, you're starting Matt Castle. You're not really getting that much more. Again, it's similar to starting Kyle Orton last year. What did that really benefit the organization long-term or even within that season? What did he do that was so much better than what E.J. Manuel could bring to the table? you got to go with Manuel because you got to find out. That's the way I look at it, very simple. And their defense is going to be good enough, you would think, in 2015, Duke, where they'd be able to overcome some mistakes and some growing pains still from E.J. Manuel. But they got to find out. I mean, you pretty much skipped an entire year in his developmental process. You've got to find out this year. You have to. Nat sucks gray 56. Did you watch ROH Best in the World? And are you a Jay Lethal fan? Uh, yeah, I like Jay Lethal. I really liked him more when he was black machismo, mind you. But, yeah, I've always been a fan of Jay Lethal. Uh, did I watch ROH Best in the World? No, I don't think so. Uh, let's hear Joshua Sung. What do you think of old Jose Aldo fighting Conor McGregor at UFC 189 with a bruised rib? And why don't you ever review UFC events? Uh, as far as reviewing UFC events, I did back for a little bit in 2011, but 
I never really had that much of a passion or for UFC. I was just doing it to do it and kind of honestly hoping that by watching it and talking about and reviewing the shows that it would get me more interested in the product and it just didn't. So it just that's why I don't do them and I just don't watch. Um, I think it's been four years since I watched a UFC pay-per-view. Yeah, I think so. Um, so as far as Aldo fighting McGregor, I don't care. I could care less. Plain and simple. I am Simon135. What is your prediction for Christoph Porzingis' NBA career with the Knicks? Uh, one thing I will say about Porzingis that bothers me a little bit is there's so much emphasis on the white European kid having to take two or three years to develop. So many of these guys that are being drafted high are college freshmen. What the hell are they going to have to do? You'll notice the narrative from the media, from organizations, from fans. is so much different for a European player like a Porzingis. Now, maybe that's because people feel that the bust rate for those European players is much higher when they're drafted high. Um, but I think it's a bullshit narrative to a degree. Uh, yes, Porzingis needs to beef up. Uh, yes, Porzingis is going to take time to develop and potentially reach his full potential. But I think Porzingis has star power and star ability. I think he has superstar potential. I really do. I, I just, I really do. I think you're talking about a guy that's almost seven foot two with a seven and a half foot wingspan that can handle the rock, that can shoot, that can dribble drive at least a little bit. And he most certainly is going to be at the NBA able to at the NBA level against slower, smaller fours. I mean, you know, he beefs up some. He could, he could be a two-way force, too, because this is a guy that plays with the desire that a lot of the Euro players don't, especially those big uh, perimeter post players, if you will. Imagine when he develops a post-up game. How in the fuck are you going to block that turnaround or fadeaway shot? I mean, now I've seen a lot of people compare him to Dirk, and I don't think the Dirk comparisons are appropriate. I see more Kevin Durant in Porzingis' game than I do Nowitzki. Now, I don't think he's going to be quite that level of player, but I think I think Porzingis is a future superstar. I really do, and I'm not going to apologize for thinking that. And I think in a couple of years, Knicks fans are going to really regret and feel stupid about booing Porzingis. Uh, let's see here. ENC98, greatest non-wrestling personality in wrestling history. Uh, Andy Kaufman? I'll go with Andy Kaufman. There you go. Uh, Louis Roulette. Do you think Cena uses the charity argument when he can't handle Bella in bed? Uh, uh, what, what exactly would be the charity argument here? Is he saying that because he got grants so many wishes, she needs to put him over and let him come inside her? Is the charity argument that when she's asking if it's in, he's saying that I'm done? And that she needs to deal with it. I don't know. You'll have to explain to me what the uh, specific charity argument you're referencing here is. Uh, let's see here. Told you soul. What do you feel about the Supreme Court's decision on same-sex marriage? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm actually frankly surprised I didn't get more questions about this. Uh, I'm somebody that's been very outspoken at different times via social media and videos on other channels about uh, my beliefs on this, that the fact that gay marriage wasn't legal in this country was an abomination uh, because I just really frankly don't see where a good legal argument can be made for gay marriage bans. And the reason being is because there isn't a good legal argument. From a constitutional standpoint, if we view marriage strictly as a religious, as a religious ceremony and a religious matter only, by sitting there and banning certain groups from doing it, as in the case of gay people, similar to the case of interracial marriages going back several decades, we are now creating an establishment of religion, which I would argue in some cases this country has done in certain matters, but by doing that, you are violating the First Amendment of the Constitution, where it's basically specifically prohibited. You know, an establishment of religion uh, is banned, is not allowed, it's unconstitutional. So, as a result, on those grounds alone, gay marriage should be legal. 
Now when you cross over to the fact that it is a civil matter for tax purposes and for different legal matters, now it becomes a discrimination issue on the same level of race and gender. It does. There's just, you know, you can put personal opinions on there, but it doesn't really matter. This is a very black and white issue. And this would make it covered by the 14th Amendment, which a lot of the people that are upset about this decision and upset about gay marriage being legal should actually bother to read the Constitution and see what is specifically said, I believe, in it. It's part one of the 14th Amendment. And that pretty much wipes out your argument against gay marriage. Uh, it, it should have been legal. It should have been legal a long time ago. I'm glad it is because, you know, for me, somebody that lives with a black woman, you know, I wouldn't exactly like if somebody told me I couldn't marry her because she was black or she couldn't marry me because I was white. I don't really see where the fundamental difference is. We can get on all the religious shit about uh, homosexuality and all that crap, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. And the, the whole argument that some will have about uh, this is a war on Christian culture. Shut the fuck up. You know, you talk about that sanctity of marriage bullshit. Um, excuse me, but heteros have done more to damage the sanctity of um, marriage for millennia than any gay couple could ever do. Now I can't wait to hear the arguments that need to be made in order to make gay divorce this equal to gay marriage. Uh, yeah, I'm glad it happened. It should have happened a long time ago. Um, let's see here. Jacob Castle 42, if you had to choose one, what is your, who's your favorite comic book superhero and why? Uh, favorite comic book superhero? I really don't know. Good question. Um, hmm. I was always kind of a Wolverine guy. Just because I was. And then, how do you see Vince stacking the card of WrestleMania 32 next year to get 100000 plus into Jerry World? Uh, Triple H Rock. Some type of match featuring Austin, which could be very well Austin versus Lesnar. Uh, Stephanie versus Ronda Rousey, Undertaker versus Sting, uh, that probably gets the job done. Hollywood KBH, do you see Bray Wyatt as a world champion? I do, uh, but not in his current capacity, not with the way his character is currently packaged. No, I do not. Uh, but, you know, in terms of co conceptually, could I see a Bray Wyatt as world champion? Yes. Jay Cheney OS, what is, what's the point of a heel commentator? You can really see it in today's business as to why a heel commentator is so important. That heel commentator is there to get heat on the heel to help get the heel over as a heel and therefore helping, as a result, to get the baby face over. Uh, of course, we don't have that now because even the guys that are supposed to play the heel commentator, they only play the heel commentator for certain segments or certain matches. But you'll see this oftentimes with the WWE when it comes to John Cena. You could have a guy be a heel of a heel of a heel of a commentator, but then when it comes to John Cena, you got to lighten up. you got to back off when they should be going harder in on as anybody. Uh, Matt Montmini, uh, thoughts on the Charleston tragedy? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what specific thoughts you want. I mean, you, you know, it was, a, it was a tragedy and it's sad. Uh, my biggest thoughts more so are on the fact of, one, that this becomes a gun control issue where nothing really ever gets accomplished and everybody seems to lose sight of the fact that the only people that win when this type of stuff happens are the gun lobbyists, the gun manufacturers, and the gun sellers. Isn't that funny? And you know, when you really think about it, when you follow the money trail, who really wants to perpetuate the gun control debate? It's the people that sell guns and make guns because they're the ones that profit the most whenever this debate happens because the gun sales go through the roof. They do. This is no bullshit. Go look at those stats over history. You can ratchet up the fear in people that you're going to take away their guns. People buy more and more and more guns, uh, which is good for the gun business. Imagine that. So... Uh, so it kind of sucks in that sense. I mean, don't get me wrong. There needs to be a discussion about that because this shit gets ridiculous. But, you know, my bigger focus is on the fact that I've seen certain media entities, most notably Fox News and the individuals involved with Fox News, try to sell this as some type of attack on Christianity and totally escaping the racial elements involved here and failing to label D Dylan Root as a terrorist. Does a guy need to wear a hoodie or a hijab in order to be classified as a terrorist? 
Does he need to be a black guy shooting up a bunch of white people, spewing anti-white things, in order to be classified as a racist? I mean, in some ways, that's a real tragedy of it all. Because you see the double standards here in the media. You've got some fucked up 21-year-old white kid, racist as fuck, shooting nine people to death. And we're talking about mental health. Mental health. And the fact that it was an attack on religion. No, you stupid fucks. It was a racist, terrorist, hate crime. And he deserves to die. Plain and simple. Let's see here, what else we got? Uh, WWE 961, should WWE do Sting versus Seth Rollins? I personally would like that and be on board with that if the story was right, but I'm not sure the story would ever be right. Even though you could have argued, you could have done that as a tune-up match, maybe, let's say, at Survivor Series last year. Because uh, me personally, I'd like to see Sting have more than just a Mania match each year. Maybe one or two other really big matches, because I think he's good enough to deserve that, and the company can most certainly use that. Uh, and then he says, ask, should HBK have beaten Triple H in their Hell in a Cell match at Bad Blood 2004? I suppose. But even if he did, Triple H would just beat him right back anyway, so what's the difference? Mr. Tuxedo, how would you feel if Dolph Ziggler left WWE to go to TNA for a six-month-plus funeral show, Jared? That's how I feel about you. <laughs> on the condition that he came on <laughs> Impact Wrestling and he confronted Jeff Jarrett and said, You're my daddy! <laughs> <laughs> and they talked the whole entire time about the feud, <laughs> that these guys are a spinning image of each other, and that Dolph Ziggler emulated Jeff Jarrett. Oh, that fucking get me to pop. All right, let's see here. Uh, Best Buy Rick won. Do you agree that TNA's biggest mistake was letting Jeff Jarrett walk? Since then, the ratings have never recovered. No, that was not their biggest mistake. And frankly... Based off of the history of TNA, how could you separate any one thing as to being the biggest mistake? A lot of people may, because of personal preference, some might point to Dixie Carter buying the company being the biggest mistake, or you know, Panda Energy buying the company being the biggest mistake, bringing in Hogan and Bischoff being the biggest mistake, uh, going to Destination America being the biggest mistake. They've had so many fucking mistakes, how can you tell what's really the biggest one? Uh, let's see here, RLA23787. Watching Raw every week is a waste of time. Should I just watch Superstars? Yeah, if you just want to see some matches and in a shorter period of time and don't need any fucking story, then yeah, I guess go ahead and watch Superstars. I don't know. I'm not watching that shit. Seeking for Life. Would it be wrong if Atami was given a top rope finisher and it was called the Atomic Bomb? Uh, probably. What's next? You're gonna you're gonna call him kicking somebody with his right foot Hiroshima and the left foot Nagasaki. If he comes up from behind, is he going to sit there and give him a Pearl Harbor attack? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and then Luke Wynn Stanley closes us out by asking, what do you think of Donald Trump's running for president? I don't understand why so many people are making him out to be such a joke candidate. And here's the reason why is because in many ways, he is the personification of the modern Republican candidate. Old white guy with bad hair and a lot of money behind him who's very pro-business and anti-Mexican. Seems to me in a lot of ways he has the, a, lot of, a lot of the attributes that a lot of Republican voters would actually like in the primary. People are going to view his candidacy as a joke because in some ways it is. But he's a little bit more serious of a candidate than he's given credit for because, again, once you peel past the bullshit of him being Donald Trump and you peel past this and that, this is a guy with a tremendous amount of name recognition. This is a guy that in certain areas is incredibly strong and vocal on certain issues, which will really make him appeal to certain segments of the GOP, especially the far right. And like I said, in a lot of ways, he's the perfect, typical GOP presidential candidate. Old, white, lots of money, out of touch. Honestly, I'm glad he run. So that way he can show how much that entire GOP feel for 2016 is a fucking joke. Seriously. So anyways, thanks to all you guys that submitted your questions for this Q&A. 
I'll have another one up next week. Make sure you check out some of the other videos here on this channel, OTRS Central. Later.